and a punch. Brother Richard? For the first of the month. For the first of the month and no return. And so happy Christmas, everybody. How many more days before Christmas? 24 days. Okay. So are you excited? Yeah. I am, actually. So Tysa said, I need to talk slowly. So we are going to have our... I'm going to be talking here instead of 30 minutes, 3 hours. You okay? We're going to have lunch anyway, so... Amen! Thank you, God. Can we just give God a... You know, I'm used to standing here, but when I'm doing the preaching, I still have butterflies in my tummy. So, yeah, they're going to go in one direction. All right. So my topic for today, this is the first week. Okay. Working. Um, here. Oh, it's on already, I guess. Yeah. Yes, rediscovering Christmas. But before I go there, okay, let me just check my notes because I have I made a very long note for you because we are going to, you know, Christmas is something that we celebrate. You know, people they don't believe they don't celebrate Christmas, but in December they still celebrate. They don't believe in Christ, but they celebrate Christmas. How does that happen? So today. Let's just close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Lord, we want to thank you so much because today, God, we're going to talk about, we're going to rediscover what's the true meaning of Christmas. And we want to thank you, God, that your presence is upon us. Teach us, Lord, and use me, God, as your mouthpiece. We thank you so much that our ears are open, our hearts are open, and we're going to look at Christmas in a different angle, Lord. It's more than partying, it's more than eating food and being with our family, but the most important thing, what is the reason for the season? Why we celebrate Christmas? And we want to thank you that it's all because of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. So this morning, I walk up and I have this mouth sore. <laughs> and I tried all the things that, you know, just to mend because it's really painful. Every time I, you know, I talk and I speak, I feel like, hey, I feel like my, yeah, I feel like my teeth is like rubbing against my tongue. So, yes, bear with me. Okay, Christmas. Christmas is an amazing event. It is unique. It is special. You know why? You have birthdays. I have a birthday. But the whole world does not celebrate except Jesus. Amen. Yeah? You believe? Yes. yes. Because Jesus is unique. Whether you believe him or you don't believe, you know, or maybe you just you came here just as a guest this morning. I just want to let you know that Jesus is a historical man. He was born, and that is true. Okay? And his birth and his coming here changed history. You know, he made a revolution in the lives of human, of human being. Christmas is the time of the year when the entire world will know and will remember who Jesus is. And we are going to start with Him. Jesus is the Messiah. They said that. Jesus is the hope. He is the joy. He is the peace. And He is the Savior of the world. Today, I am just going to focus in one point. Jesus as a Messiah. Next week, I think Jesus as the King. Okay? So, what is Messiah? And why Jesus? Why not just other people? Why not just, you know, someone else? Why Jesus is connected to um, Christmas? But to start with, all right, this is very exciting. Let me give you a short quiz to see your familiarity with the Bible and the story of Christmas. Do you know? Yeah? Get ready your minds, all right? And I put this one, Christ. One more. There. 
So I just put the emphasize. The word Christmas really came from the word Christ. So when you go somewhere, when you see the Christmas, it's always the word Christ that you're going to look at because that's the true meaning of Amen. Christmas. All right, let's go to our quiz. Number one. Hey. Mm. Which Old Testament prophet had the most to say about the birth of Christ? A, B, C, or D? C. Hey, the answer is D. Oh. The book of Isaiah has much to say about the birth of the Savior. Okay? Uh, number two. Hey. Who told Mary and Joseph to go to Bethlehem? A, Angel, B, Holy Spirit, C, Caesar Augustus, or D, King Herod? A, a B, or C? A. a. You're wrong. It's C. Oh, my goodness. He ordered the people. It's C. <laughs> I'm changing your answer. He ordered the people to go back to the city of their ancestors. That's why when they were in Nazareth, they have to go to Jerusalem because that's where Joseph's family is, right? Number three. What form of transportation did Mary and Joseph use to get to Bethlehem? They walked. They rode the camels. He walked. Joseph walked. Mary rode the donkey or D, who knows? C. Louder? C. Oh, C. Ah, you're wrong again. <laughs> Nobody knows. Are you thinking you know my story? Nobody knows. It was not, you know, the one that you see, the one that you see on the book, it was just the creative thinking of the painter. But in the Bible, it did say. So who knows?
this is our scripture today. Let's just go back. Jesus the Messiah. <laughs> right. Thank you, Jesus. Right. So I'm just going to go through the background a little bit because um, we need to understand that before Jesus came on earth, there was a prophecy. Okay? And I'm going to tell you later who gave the first prophecy and, and why he is the fulfillment of this prophecy. So in Matthew 1, let me just read this to you. The gospel according to Matthew was written to the Hebrews when they were under the rule of romance. You remember they were exiled in the Babylon? Um, the Hebrews, they had no king. They had no country. And for several hundred years, um, they were left with the religious law and the uh, words of the prophets. That's all they're holding into. Okay? So, the prophet had spoken that there is a Messiah. A Messiah is coming. The anointed one. And this is the one that God will send, that Messiah, to save the human, to save you and me. So in this gospel, Matthew is showing us that the Messiah called Jesus Christ had already come to them, but they did not recognize him. Okay? So when he was written, he was writing this um, gospel, Matthew was trying to say, Jesus is the Messiah, but you know, Hebrew people, they were, they were looking for someone else, another Savior. They have a different picture of Savior in their minds. Now everybody, let's just, see, let's just read this one. The ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah. So this is a record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah. A descendant of David and Abraham. Okay, what is a genealogy? Means this is the history of the past and the present members of the family or our families. And here, okay, it says here that Jesus is the Messiah and he came from the descendants of King David. Okay, King David. Okay, let's just take a look at what is what, what's Messiah? What is Messiah anyway? Jedi always hear that. Let's just review a little bit. So Messiah means in Hebrew word is Mashiach. Mashiach. Mm. In Greek, it's called Christos. It's Christ. Okay? In English, that's Jesus Christ. And the meaning of Messiah is a chosen one or anointed one. If you are a chosen one, you are someone with a special purpose. You have this God-ordained purpose. In the Old Testament, when a prophet will anoint the people or God will anoint the people, they used oil. But Jesus, do you know what God used to anoint him? His own spirit. That's why he is the Messiah. He's not an ordinary man. Jesus himself gave his spirit to him. Okay? Now, so why Jesus? How could you prove that, Jeff? Well, uh, it's not only me, but if you look at the history way, way back, we have the proof that Jesus is the Messiah. Okay. So actually, this is the like a family tree from the house of David, and on the side, this is the this is the study that Matthew had that Jesus uh, Joseph came from the clan of King Solomon. But then there was a problem because during that time, King Jeconiah or King Joachim he kept on disobeying God. So God says there is. God said to him in Jeremiah that there are four, because King Jeno sorry, King Jeconiah, therefore said he shall have none to sit on the throne of David. So, so if Jeokim or Jeconiah cannot be the the representative of Jesus, but God has another plan, because King David had a lot of sons, and one of them is also Nathan. So when you see Nathan, and you will see down and up there, down, down, all the way down, down, you will see Mary, the one who conceived Jesus Christ. 
Okay, even though Joseph is not the bio biological father of Jesus, do you see the connection? Mary was chosen by God as the direct descendant of Nathan. Still in the bloodline of Nathan is not a king, but he is the son of King David. Still, there is a royalty blood. Yeah? You see the connection? Mm. So, right. So in Genesis 3.15, this is the first prophecy, okay? Actually, this is God talking to the serpent during the fall, uh, the fall of man. So God was talking to the serpent. And God said, okay, and I will put enmity, open hostility, meaning I'm going to put the great hay between you and the woman, talking to the serpent. God is talking to the serpent. And between your seed and her seed, he shall fatally bruise your head and you shall only bruise his heel. This is the first announcement of the gospel. So you see, even in the beginning, God already planned the, 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 uh, the promised Messiah, promised Savior. And this is the first prophecy about the Messiah who through his death and re resurrection would ultimately defeat Satan. And he's not talking about, you know, just human being. He's talking about Jesus. Okay? Do you see now the... Do you see the connection now? Mm. And so, this prophetic word has been passed from generation to generation. Okay? Generation to generation. And they thought, people from the Old Testament, they thought, oh, maybe Abraham is our savior because he helped us, you know, cross the, what's that, the Red Sea. Or maybe it was Moses, or maybe it was Samson. But no, they weren't. Because they were all dead. Okay? Yeah. They they had they had flawed, they sinned. So they're not fit to be the Messiah. So what they did, the Hebrew people they waited and waited. And during the dark times of the Old Testament, in the in the history of Israel, because they still kept on waiting for the Messiah, they also kept on disobeying God. Okay? That's the reason why they kept sinning against God. So, the, the result of that, they were exiled to Babylon. You see? You know when we keep on sinning and sinning and sinning, there will come a point that we will find ourselves locked in that little, you know, say, prison of sin. Because that's what the Hebrew people did. So when they were exiled there, they had no land of their own, so they were not in their own country. And so they need a king. But even though they were exiled, they were still excited because they're still hoping that the Messiah will come. Even though they went through a lot of hardships, they went through a lot of struggles, at, you know, in the back of their mind, there is hope. Are you going through the same? Oh, Jen, everything is just so hopeless now. <laughs> but stay there. Yeah. You must put that in the back of your mind, there is hope. Mm. Yeah. So, now, this is the exciting things. So while they are waiting, they were really picturing out what would our Messiah look like. Is he going to be like a man riding a horse with his gear, with his spear or his sword or whatever? This is the kind of Messiah the Hebrew people were painting in their mind. So when Jesus came, they overlooked the Messiah's spiritual role as a deliverer. Those people, those Hebrew people, they were looking for someone like a political person to save them. But that is not the plan of God. The plan of God is to save them and will send someone that will free them spiritually. Because they're not just only, you know, in bondage physically, but spiritually they are. And that they mislook. And there are people in this world right now that um, they think they're free. Oh, my life is okay. I don't have a lot of problem. But actually, deep inside, there is something that's holding them back. 
That's why Jesus came for you and me to liberate us because true freedom you will not experience true freedom unless G unless you encounter Jesus. Okay? And this is what is lacking in those times. Okay? They're looking, they have Samson, they have um, who's the prophetess, the the prophetess De Deborah. They were just people. You know, they will only they will have they will have um victory for maybe a year or maybe months and then after that they go back again to bandage so their life is like in cycle because there is no savior there's no freedom during that time ah are we fine okay are you learning i i, I was also learning when i was studying them so they did understand that his kingdom that his kingdom was spiritual not political Okay? Jesus came on earth not to establish a government. Okay? We go back again to the beginning. When he came to earth, he did not came to, oh, I'm going to have my own government. I'm going to have it. No. His very main purpose is to establish a kingdom. That's why our mission statement is what? To make his kingdom known. Ah. So during that time, not a lot of people really appreciate and accepted Jesus as the Messiah. So some of them were not ready to accept Him. Even though they, they saw the miracles and then the direct, you know, direct answer to the prophecy, they still don't believe. And there are still people right now here. Even though they see the goodness, the mercy, and the miracles that God has been doing in their lives, they still, no, I'm not going to believe. See, like history repeats itself. Mm. Right. We're not yet done with that. This is this is still the background. So, <laughs> Taisa, just bear with me. So, if you're if you're going to count the generation from Abraham going to Jesus when Jesus was born, there was like fourteen generations. Abraham to David, 14. David to the exile to Babylon, that's another 14 generation. And then from Babylon to Jesus Christ, 14 years. So they waited and waited and waited. Some of them, you know, some of them died already. But then what the good thing about God? Even though they waited for a long time because God is a faithful God. A God of promise. He fulfilled His word. Do you believe that? Yes. Are you waiting for something? Are you looking forward for something and you just don't receive it right now? The Lord said, wait, 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 and wait. And while you're waiting, just walk on His ways. Just believe, just hold on. Because time will come. He will send to you and He will meet the need that you have. Okay? Amen. Okay, next. Okay, so we're just going to continue. So Jacob and the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus who is called the Messiah. In Isaiah 42, 11, this is what Isaiah said to Jesus. Why Jesus? He said here, look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him and he will bring justice to the nation. This is the affirmation. Okay? A spirit-filled servant, not a conqueror or tyrant. So this is the one. The agent of God is a liberator who will bring justice and not domination. So when Jesus came on earth, you know, he, I, do you believe that Jesus was a gentle God? Very gentle. Even though people would keep on harassing him, persecuted him, he never thought of a revenge. He was still gentle with them. Even though there's come up to a point that he was very, very angry. You know, you, you know when he went to the market and he saw that his face was like was turned into um how what was that? Uh what do you call? Thieves then, yeah. Temple, it turned into a market. He just like that was an anger. He expressed his anger, but he was never violent with people. Okay? He was never, he was very, very gentle. Mm. Now, 
So that's the background, okay, of Jesus. Now let's go. So what is the expectation about the Savior? Okay, so this is now the story of Christmas. This is where the Christmas begins. Actually, it, be it began a long time ago, but this is just the fulfillment of the real Christmas story. The, the birth of Christ Mass. Okay, so in Matthew, everybody read the birth of Jesus the Messiah. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Alright, so we have here a situation. So Mary and Joseph was about to be uh, married. So but before the marriage will take place, they were already engaged. But actually, they're already considered as husband and wife. But all of a sudden, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. If that was you boys, gentlemen here, what are you going to do? Are you still going to marry that person if you found out that <laughs> she's pregnant? What do you think? Of course not, right? Literally, you wouldn't do that. That's not my child. Why would marry you? <laughs> yeah. So that was a very big trouble for Joseph. And then, so let's do let's read the messy verse. And her husband Joseph, being a just and an unjust man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Because he is a righteous man. He was thinking, um, I think I'm just going to So he just made that plan in his mind. Oh, no, I don't want our lives to be in trouble. I don't want her to be in trouble. I don't want her to put into public shame because she's pregnant. I'm just going to divorce her, you know, secretly. Now what's the connection? What's the connection with our lives right now? Sometimes we find ourselves in a, in a situation where we're not really at fault. You know, we just suddenly kicked out of the job, you were just doing your job properly, and then all of a sudden your boss said, okay, you're fired. And so, you made the plan in your mind. But I didn't know do anything. But why these things happen to me? And so you made the plan B, and plan C, and plan D, but apparently, what if those things happen because God is leading us into His master plan? Amen. What if? Sometimes we don't realize it. Why? Because we're just too busy focusing on our plan. And it's the same with Joseph. Okay? He was just like, ah, oh, I need to plan. I need to do something because or else blah, 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 blah. And it's the same with us. We're sitting down there. I need to look for a job. Oh, I need to do this. I need to, I just need to, I, 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 I. What about him? Don't you know that in our, in, in, you know, in our entire life, God is always involved in every season of our life. We just don't realize it, but He is, and He is always there. Okay? He is always there. Now, so, what happened? So while he was thinking and thinking and thinking, and suddenly, he considered these things. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him. He was busy thinking, and all of a sudden, this angel popped up. And saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. Do not fear. Take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, we know that this is the story now of the Immaculate Conception. In the Philippines, we call that Virgin Mary. virgin Birth. So, we call Mary Virgin Mary <laughs> because she was pregnant by uh, the Holy Spirit. Okay? So, the angel of the Lord explained to him, Joseph, don't fear. Don't fear because God is um, taking good care of everything. So, how do we... Do that in our ear to you <laughs> and say that. But the Holy Spirit does. He does it at all times. We make plans and then, you know, when we're scared, when we just don't know what to do, 
when we're just in the middle of the anxiety, when we are in the middle of conflicts, the Holy Spirit is there. Sometimes we just don't listen. Or sometimes we just choose not to, you know, not to obey. Have you ever experienced that before? Do you think that there's a voice telling you, you must do that, you must do that, but you didn't do. And at the end, you were in trouble. But the good thing about Joseph, what he did, he chose to honor Jesus. And so, yeah. Okay, okay, so he obeyed. So both Mary and Joseph, they they decided to trust and obey God. So they experienced this amazing grace. They encountered Jesus in their lives and they were never the same. I tell you something. Once you experience the love of Christ, you are never the same. Are you do you agree with me? Some of you if you don't, maybe this is the time for you later. Amen. Ask God. Because when they when they, they obeyed, I mean, there's no sense at all, but they obeyed, they trusted God. And the most wonderful thing is that they witnessed the birth of the Savior of the earth. You know what? The most important event in human history is not the resurrection of Jesus. Okay? Do you believe? That the most important event in human history isn't the resurrection of Jesus, but it's the virgin birth. Why? Simple reason. The resurrection was dependent upon the conception. You cannot die unless you're born. Yes. Yes? yes. So Jesus has to be born so he could die for you and me so he can save us. Yes. So the greatest event in the history is the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah? Amen. Now, on the verse 21, and it says here, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Jesus, um, there's another term, Yahweh. Yahweh saves. Right? And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord has spoken by the prophet. So Jesus was not an ordinary man. When he came to earth, he was 100% human being, and he was also 100% God. So he was not an ordinary man. So his name Jesus here is Yahweh saves. And that name reveals his mission and identity. What is his mission? To what? To save and redeem us and his identity as the Savior King. Amen? He's not only a Savior, but he is also a King. You know in a monarchy, this is a monarchy uh, country, if the King or if somebody takes your property, the only person who has the authority to give back to you what others had you know, stolen from you is only the king. When the king says that, oh, and <laughs> you lost your house, your property, your acres, your wood, whatever, ah, now the king, and from now on, you're going to what? Receive, and I restore everything that these people uh, have stolen from you. Okay? And it's the same with God. That's why He is a Savior King. The first thing that we have to understand, Jesus did not only come to rescue us, to save you. Another reason, there are some Christians that, you know, they don't really enjoy life because they did not understand that after God had saved you, He also... A plan to restore everything to you. Okay? It doesn't stop with only salvation. It continues with the restoration until you will experience that life abundant. That is with Christ. So, if you're like, why well, am I struggling now? Maybe you don't realize that God has been restoring to you the things, but you just don't see it. You just don't experience it. Why? Because you just stop there. I'm safe. I'm okay. 
another promise of God after the salvation is the restoration. That's why He came on earth. That's why He gave us authority again. Let's go back again to the very main uh, original plan. We are here so we could dominate. We have the authority. Everything has been restored to us. That is our that is our position. That is our identity. King. Kings. Whatever authority he has, we have. And whatever access he has he has there in heaven, we all have. Amen. Yeah. Uh, so we want to thank you. Let me just give Jesus a Amen. Yeah. Right. I am almost there. Okay. So let me just read this to you. So once you make a conscious decision to live a sinful life, okay, now this is, um, this is your, this is now personal, okay? So I don't know how you live your life. You always have a choice. Choice is something that you do and no people can compel you and God cannot even compel you to live your life. Now question, how do you live your life? You know, the Bible says it very clear. If you keep on disobeying God and you walk away from His ways, your life is so obvious. Miserable, empty, lifeless, heavy, shallow, and with no direction. Okay? That's why when Jesus came to us, Amen. right, He has given us this opportunity to experience the things that the world cannot give us. The things that you know, the sin has been keeping from us. The joy, the peace, the love, the hope, the prosperous life. Mm, this is what God is offering us. So what is my, I mean, what is the point yet? Why are you telling this? What I'm telling you that Christmas, when Jesus came to us, Christmas is the greatest expression of God's love to us. Because He gave us the greatest gift wrapped in human flesh, which is Jesus Christ. And every day is a Christmas day. Every day He is offering, take Jesus, accept Jesus, accept Jesus. Because that's, the, that's His present to us. You just have to receive it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to earn it. You just have to receive it. And that's what God is telling us. Receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and then boom. Pastor David, and then boom. Okay. Now, let's go here. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning this is God is with us. So this is the promise now. When Jesus, you know, when Jesus, when God gave us Jesus, it's not only for one day. It's not only for two months. It is a promise 365 days. Because Emmanuel, God is with us. It has no expiration. It has no termination. It has no deadline. It is irrevocable. When God said that God is with you, He is going to be with you all the days of your life. And that is a promise. That is a promise. And that how faithful our God is. Amen? Amen. So, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife. When he did not have fat, they did not have any sexual relations with her until the son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. What does Jesus mean? Yahweh saves. Ah, when you when you you know when you don't know what to say, you just say Jesus. Jesus saves me. Okay. So now, what is the point of, of this one? Now we're come to the conclusion. So Christmas brings what? Good news. It brings light and hope. It brings a Savior. It means the Savior has been born to us. That Christmas means God's faithfulness. And this Christmas means love and 
Condens sorry, help me to read this one. Condescension of God. Meaning even though he is superior to us, he did not you know, he did not consider himself superior. He stood down. That's why he gave his son, Jesus Christ, because of the love that he has for us. And Christmas brings peace and joy. So the point is, how are you going to celebrate your Christmas? And how are you going to, you know, how are you going to honor Christ when we celebrate Christmas? You know, the good thing about Jesus Christ, the good thing about this season, people choose to forgive. People choose to uh, be reunited with families, with friends. Why do they choose Christmas? Because Christmas is a spirit. And God is a spirit. And during Christmas, this is the spirit that, you know, rocks us all around the world but for us Christmas is not only in December right yes. this is like a continuous walk every day and we have to practice every day yes. and so when Jesus when God said Jesus is the Messiah these are the things that the people enjoy because when they were exiled in the Babylon do you think they have peace I don't think they had you know, maybe when they were, you know, sleeping in their house, in their houses, maybe some of them can't even sleep because maybe a soldiers will come and then, you know, just runs up the house. It could be like that. Do you think they experience joy? How could you, how could you experience joy when you are in exile? How could you experience love if people, you know, are beating you every day and you have to do the hard work and labor? How are you going to see the light and hope when all you can see is darkness, literal darkness and darkness, spiritual darkness? How can you, you know, how can you experience that good news if you are in that situation? But when Jesus came, all these things was given and was experienced by those people who accepted him as the Messiah. And even though right now we might we might be you know going through gloomy times we're now in the low times of our lives we're in the season like everything is dry but god promised you will still have this unspeakable joy that you will still have this peace peace is not the presence of war what is peace peace is in the presence of god you know the song that we just you know sang a while ago everybody please stand up the song, the song that we just sang ago, peace. Before I, I would, I would say that oh, what is peace, love? What is peace, God? Do you think you are you still able to experience that peace even though things are not going, are not going well in your life? If you still have this amount. In your bank account you still have peace the peace that God is giving us it says in the scripture is the peace that transcends all kinds of understanding and that's only can be found in the presence of Christ Jesus how about love are you having a hard time giving love to other people or do you feel like nobody loves me? Are you going through depression? Are you going through this, you know, this state in your mind where you think you are alone? Jesus came because He loves you. Jesus came so we can experience His love. His love is faithful. His love gives us protection. His love secures us. And there is no insecurity in the love that God has given us. About hope. Are you hopeless? Is there something right now that you feel like, oh, nothing's changing, Jen. Nothing. It's nothing. Everything seems so constant, stagnant. But Jesus said, I'm here, I came so I can give you hope. I came so I can give you light because I am the light. So just right now, 
you know, just just give thanks to God. Just give thanks to Jesus because, you know, when He said, when He died on the cross, He said, it is done, it is finished, it is complete. That's the final word that He said, that you, we must settle on it. It is done. It is finished. Settle. And just be, you know, just be in my presence. Thank you, God. You're so faithful to us. I just want to pray, Father, because some of us here have, you know, our love for you <laughs> may have decreased or our relationships with you, Lord, is in the middle. I don't know, some of us are like feeling like, oh God, I don't feel your presence. I don't feel your, I don't feel your love. I just don't feel like, I just don't feel like serving you. I just don't feel like loving you. I just don't feel like having this intimate time with you. I was there. I'd been there. But you know what? The presence of God has never left us. We are the one running away from His presence. That's the truth. If we feel like we are so down, we're so exhausted, we're so tired, we're so weary, that is because we are not connected to the source of strength, the source of, you know, that source. <coughs> We ask forgiveness, Lord. Yes. Maybe because we're not aware, we just turn our back from you, God. And the more we are choosing to drift away from you, the more we are losing that relationship, that relationship, God, that you invested, that you, you know, the relationship, Father, that you, that you brought to us. We ask forgiveness, Lord, because sometimes we just shut you down and we just shut you out of our lives. We just shut you off, out of our minds. And Lord, and we think that it's your fault why things, why these things are happening to us. We ask forgiveness, God. We ask forgiveness. We want to thank you, Lord, that you're a faithful God. That you never turn from your word when you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. You're so mindful of your promises, God. That, you know, while we are standing here, we know that this is another promise, another day that you've given to us. And we just want to choose, Lord, to just fix our eyes on you. Just remember how good, how faithful, how merciful, how graceful you are to us. Yes. We can be so arrogant sometimes. We're so rude spiritually without realizing, Father, that if we operate apart from you, God, we are nothing. We want to thank you, Lord, that this Christmas we're just going to remember the promise. Messiah, we're just going to remember Jesus and hear we think that we do. When we do the party, when we gather together as a family, we pray God that we will be so bold to tell our friends, to tell our families that Christmas is about Christ. That this is all about you, God. Not about the food, not about the, you know, the um, luxury things that we receive, not about the presents, not about the holidays or vacation we get. But this is all about you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together as a family. That when we when we hear Christmas, the first thing that we will have in our mind is Christ. We want to thank you that you came to earth, that you obeyed God. You came and then you even died for us. We want to thank you for your promises. We want to thank you, Lord, that... 
in our journey, in our life right now, we know, God, that we are not alone because you promised that God is with us. Emmanuel is who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank